Hello, welcome to episode number two of our homeschool history. I am so excited about this series. It might go on forever. 32 years of homeschooling, it could go on forever. Who knows, right? Um, but I'm going to take off where I left off last week in episode one. And you'll have to go back and listen. That's a little longer than they're going to be. I'm going to try to keep them 10 to 12 minutes, uh, just like my 10-minute grammar ones. Last week's was too long. I didn't realize it until until it was too late. <laughs> so um, last week I talked about how we first began homeschooling when our oldest son was um, one and a half and we started homeschooling my younger sister. So you'll have to get the whole scoop of that um, from the last episode. Um, but also um, there were a lot of um, political and societal things going on then with homeschooling that I wanted to tell you about in today's episode. So at the time, in Indiana, 38 years ago now, um, I when we began homeschooling my younger sister, it was such that the law said the same thing as it says today. And that is that you have to uh, school um, from, uh, don't quote me on the law, okay? Uh, but it was something like you have to school from uh, age seven to 16, um, uh, equivalent instruction. Okay, that those were the the um, the, the real buzzwords there. Uh, equivalent instruction. So um, equivalent instruction <laughs> is very wide open, and that's why, like today in Indiana, nobody really gets challenged. At least I don't hear about it anymore. I mean, I suppose it happens here and there, but it's not typical to be challenged by the school system or you know truancy or govern, the government or anything like that um, for homeschooling um, nowadays, now in Indiana. And obviously, if you're turned in or you're, you know, somebody calls about your homeschool or something like that, that's a different thing. But um, basically, it's assumed that nobody's going to touch that equivalent instruction kind of thing, right? What is equivalent instruction? If they deem that you know, your child is behind. What do they do about this kids who go to school who are behind and so on and so forth. So it's not really a thing anymore very much um, as far as just that, just the law itself. Like, okay, you're homeschooling. We're going to check on you. You're homeschooling. We're going to check on you. We're, you're homeschooling. We're going to check on you in Indiana. But then it was very different. So 38 years ago in Indiana, homeschooling was very new. I went to, the, we went, uh, my husband and I went to the very first homeschool convention Indiana ever ha held at the War Memorial building in Indianapolis. And um, we were actually, this is so odd because then we became vendors of our own products later. We were actually vendors of um, Raymond Moore's uh, Better Late Than Early Homeschool, um, Homegrown Kids. Homegrown Kids was um, the, the name of the main book. He had lots of books, but that was one of the books about homeschooling. And um, uh, we vended his products. So we took his like math it. He had, he had two levels of math it. He had readers, uh, more McGuffey readers. Um, he had learning games, um, just various things at that time that, that he compiled and sold. Uh, and he actually had a whole, you could sign up for a curriculum and your curriculum was tailor-made. So it was different than nowadays, right? Where you buy a curriculum all put together. His curriculum was tailor-made. So what that meant was we turned in all the information for my sister, filled out all the forms and everything. And then they sent back a certain level of math, a certain level of reading, you know, certain level of phonics, certain level of science and so forth. And a whole, um, you know, list of what we should do with her every day and so forth. It's very, very cool. Um, not something you see very often anymore as far as like, uh, they're giving you a complete program, but it's tailored to your child. Because like I said, Lisa was in a different grade level for word calling than she was comprehension for sure. And then of course, word calling was way higher than her math as well. So um, that was really interesting. I forgot all about that until just now. What a blast from the past. Um, so uh, in Indiana, 
people were being challenged a lot because it was so new. Like I said, Dr. Raymond Moore was one of the pioneers of Christian homeschooling and John Holt was one of the pioneers of the unschooling, both about that time. I'm, I'm saying it's 38 years ago, but you know, before that, there were small pockets here and there, but that was the first year of the um, state convention. So that was when it really became a thing. And there were probably only like 30 or 40 of us there even. I don't even remember. It wasn't that many. Maybe 100. There might have been 100. I'm trying to think of how busy the little vending area was. It was pretty busy, but it was also busy because when we first began, this is a, a real uh, funny thing when you consider curriculum now. It's everywhere, right? You can get it anywhere, anytime. But the funny thing about curriculum was that you could not get it very readily. And it was like this, this is so funny. It was like black market under the table. If a Christian school would supply your homeschool with a Becca or Bob Jones or one of the big um, uh, homeschool, I mean, one of the big Christian school publishers, it was like it had to be under the table. Nobody could know about it. It's just so funny now, you know? Look at us now, we're like bombarded with curriculum. But then you were lucky to get it. So the fact that Dr. Moore did this individualized homeschool packet was a really big deal, um, even when homeschooling was in its, in, in its infancy. So um, we uh, actually were challenged because by the government, the school and so forth, because uh, in the little town that we were in, Union City, Indiana, uh, at that time, homeschooling had started to, to grow. And there were about, I don't know, I think that there were maybe 20 families, maybe 15, but there were probably 20 families, but a lot of them came from Ohio because they didn't have their own group yet. We were on the Indiana, Ohio line. So there were probably 20 families like who would come to the support meetings. And I remember our first field trip was to the Levi Coffin House in Richmond, Indiana. I've been there five times near Richmond in Lynn. I've been there at least five times for field trips. My first one was with a one and a half year old. Yeah, because he really needed to know about the Levi Coffin House when he was one and a half. Oh, those are the days. Homeschooling was everything to me. <laughs> it still is. It still is. I mean, family's everything for sure. But um, homeschooling is very important, right? It's very important because it 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 was our life. And so you can't, you know, when you have something that's that important and that big, significant 32 years of your life, um, it, it, it just becomes within you, you know, just something so phenomenal. So because of these 20 families total, but actually in Union City, Indiana, there were maybe a dozen. So uh, because of that, the school felt very threatened at the time. And so they decided to challenge the equivalent instruction part of the Indiana law. And so they um, came out and visited us. They came out and um, I, we were visited by the superintendent. We were visited by the social worker um, and then the principal of the school that she would have gone to, uh, that my sister would have gone to. We had home visits, observations testing and everything. It was very a very big deal. And um, I, I don't know if homeschool legal defense, I don't feel like it was there yet. If it was, it would have been very, very early on. Um, but actually what they did was they chose one family out of all of the dozen of us that they came to check on and everything. And um, they decided that they were going to pursue them to try to you know, get people to stop homeschooling and go to school. This is no reflection on schools, on teachers, nothing for me. I, I, um, I'm sure some of my grandkids will go to school. Uh, some of them go to preschool now. Um, I'm just, I'm not anti-school. I'm just not, but this is what happened. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to tell the facts, just the facts folks. So, um, uh, then after they went and did that for all of us, then they chose one. Um, who, you know, their kids were really, really behind. Um, and they, you know, were kind of using more of an unschooling approach. And that was very frowned upon then. And um, so they took them all the way to court. And uh, as it turns out, Dr. Raymond Moore came to our little town of Union City, Indiana, and uh, gave a deposition for that family um, 
and I actually got to spend the day with him, which was remarkable. I got to learn from the master himself. Um, I remember that he was a uh, veg he was Seventh Day Adventist, so they I think I want to say they're vegetarians. Not they're not vegans. I don't think I think they were, he was a vegetarian, and um, he took all of his chicken out of his noodle soup <laughs> at lunch. I remember that little tidbit there. I don't know why I remember that, um, but delightful man, loved God, loved people, loved homeschooling, loved families. Um, yeah, it was really, really a wonderful day for me. It wasn't for the family, obviously. Um, and so then they took them all the way and then uh, they ended up losing and the family got to keep homeschooling. I can't remember exactly what even happened with all that, but I do know the result of that and all those visits and all that was that Everybody's quit homeschooling except us. Um, the one family um, kept homeschooling but moved, uh, the one that they, got, they had taken to court. Um, the other families banded together, many of them, and started a Christian school. And, uh, and we were the only ones in Union City homeschooling that I knew of. There were probably others who were hiding, right? But we were the only ones in that little town at that time, during that school year, um, once that progressed to the to the trial or the court date and everything like that. So, um, yeah, so that was homeschooling in Indiana 38 years ago. And uh, so we were just by ourselves. We were we were the only ones. And uh, during that year and actually for for quite a while, it, it didn't feel like uh, we did things with people from Ohio because um, I became a an umbrella for Ohio. Ohio, um, their law said they had to have a certified teacher as an umbrella to them. So I became an umbrella for many people in Ohio. And um, so we did things with them as far as field trips and things like that. Um, but uh, really in our little burg, in our little town, there just wasn't much left then at that point. So that is episode two of our homeschool history. I have so many great memories. One of the reasons why I'm so excited about this series is I just want to tell you everything. I just want to tell you um, the wonderful moments. I just want to tell you the highlights of my kids as homeschooling. Just want to tell you what I, what didn't work, what just worked terribly. What you know, what oh, what I wish I'd never done. You know, I just want to tell you all of it, and I want to um, be there for you um, as an experienced homeschooling mom to just give you hope, give you. Um, recommendations, give you also um, uh, some cautions too. So stay with me here and tell your friends, put this in your stories. That would really help me out a lot so that other homeschoolers can find uh, this series, Our Homeschool History. Thanks a lot for joining me.